Chris Marks. This is episode two. This is a 2020 Virginia bow hunt for one of the Magnum 8s that I was lucky enough to take last year. I had been hunting this particular buck for three years. Now, I didn't see this buck at all the prior year, so I thought he had gotten killed. Uh, he was a really good buck two years before I took him, and uh, so obviously he's fairly mature. He was really mature, actually. I had him at six years old. He possibly could have been five at the youngest, uh, but he definitely was between five and six years old. Uh, like I say, he was already a good shooter at three and a half. And uh, let's pick up the action real quick because there, there's a lot involved in this hunt, and I'm going to explain it as we go along. Uh, one thing I will point out, this was a hunt at the end of October pre-rut, which is what's going on right now. I like to keep these shows current. That's why I do the commentary right before I release them. And uh, it's real similar to what's going on this year, except with the exception of there's a lot of acorns dropping this year, whereas we didn't have them last year. And if you'll notice in these clips from this hunt, you'll see that these bucks were coming out into this grown up, old grown up field in this low area and, um, you know, feeding on the grass and bumping the does and doing everything they do in pre-rut time. And that's ex this is exactly the perfect example of why I absolutely love this time of year to bow hunt. It's by far my favorite time of year to bow hunt because you really never know what you're going to see. And they respond to so many different things. And uh, let's jump right into the action. And I'm going to explain it. I'm going to cut in and explain everything that's going on because there's a lot going on in this episode, trust me. So uh, tune in and uh, get ready to see something that's pretty unique, at least I thought so. And I'll get back to you here in a minute. All right, so let me cut in real quick and explain what's going on, what you just saw, uh, where we're at in regards to the hunt, the stage of the hunt. So I've set up, <clears throat> there's a front moving in this evening. It, it, if you can tell from that video, uh, from the first segment, you'll pick it up through a couple of the segments, but the wind is absolutely howling. I mean, it's blowing 25 with gusts all the way up to 45. Um, you know, a lot of guys won't hunt in those type of conditions, but when it's the right time of year, and you've got a front moving in. I think it was 75 degrees that day, and it was supposed to drop to like low into the 50s for the next day. So this is that evening where it's blowing all that humidity out, all the dry air is pushing in, real strong northwest wind coming in. And uh, that's hammer time for us bow hunters. If you're not out there in the woods during those times, you really are missing out. A lot of people won't hunt during heavy wind like that, and this video is an awesome testament of why you really need to be in the woods if you're after you know mature bucks because it will put them on the, their feet they had been kind of not inactive the past week prior to this just because we had such warm temperatures last year so what's going on is i spotted this buck <clears throat> way across this bottom he's about 150 yards away that's why you're going to notice a lot of you know the camera's a little shaky i had to cut a lot of it out i, I videoed this buck for a solid 20 to 25 minutes that's how long I was watching him. He's a nice eight pointer, as you see. So I'm, <clears throat> I want to explain what I'm doing. If you think, you know, hey, this guy, he's an idiot. He's blowing that grunt call. He don't know what the hell he's doing. Well, trust me, I know what I'm doing when it comes to grunting. And uh, I've grunted a lot of them in. And I know the grunt call sounds horrible when you're blaring on it like that. But that buck was out there 150 yards away. And I'm doing everything I can to make it as loud as possible to carry in that wind to get to him. And if you'll notice, he picks it up, barely. 
a lot of times guys think they aren't responding to them in that heavy wind. But when you got a deer that's 150 yards away, sometimes they can't hear it. So I'll blare on it sometimes, as you hear. It doesn't sound the greatest, but when they're in the right mood, a lot of times all you need to do is get his attention. Then you hit him with that ramp, 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 ramp. You know, then you can shorten it up once you got him coming. He hears that grunt call, and it, he does have a reaction to it, as you'll see. So I'm going to get back to you here in a minute. And um, like I say, keep in mind, this buck's 150 yards away. I had to actually free arm the camera. That's why it's wobbling a little bit. So I'm trying to get this, capture this on camera so I can show it to you guys just to show you what's going on. You know, he makes a scrape and, you know, he's posturing a little bit as far as, you know, his stage of where he's at. And if I had some rattling horns with me that evening, I think I could have brought that buck in. But let's carry on and watch the rest of it and you'll see what happens here and I'll get back to you here in a minute. Okay, so as you can tell, I'm messing with this buck. I'm playing around with him, throwing everything but the kitchen sink at him. Now, this was a last-minute hunt that I decided to run down and jump in this stand. <clears throat> I cut out of work a little bit early. I wasn't really planning on hunting. Uh, as soon as I saw what that weather was going to do, I said, you know, I got to go to that stand. I had hunted this stand. I already had it set. I had hunted it a couple days prior to that and just had some does come through. Never even seen a buck. So I'm like, you know what? There's some great big rubs in that area. I know this is a little cut he likes to come through. Uh, you can see all that thick stuff where I'm videoing this. That's what they come out of. They bed up real close to the stand. So I knew with that heavy wind co cover, I said, you know what? I could sneak right in there real quiet. Even though I was a little late getting in the tree, I was able to sneak right in there, jump up in that stand, get set up. And uh, so I'm sitting there blaring on this grunt call. I'm watching this buck. I'm videoing them from this angle, from this angle. I'm going around the tree like this. And I'm doing a lot of this free-handed because it's so thick on that side of the tree. If you could tell, I probably couldn't shoot anything with the bow on that side. Remember, that's 150 yards away. And, uh, you know, I bow hunt, almost purely bow hunt. I don't hardly hunt with anything else. Muzzle loader occasionally, but mostly 99% of the time I'm bow hunting. So, you know, he's over there, I'm messing with him, and I'm blaring on that grunt call. Now, he starts to go back in that back. I said, well, maybe he's going to come around and come around this slough and uh, come to me because there's some water in between me and him, and it's also real thick. So I said, maybe I'll get lucky. About that time, I'm watching him, and he just disappears out of what you saw in the last clip. I hear something just very faintly off to my left. I do one of these numbers, and all I see is this. Now, you don't see that on the camera, 
because the camera's still focused over there where he's at. And I'm like, well, there's no way that's that buck. He's 150 yards away because it looks similar. And then I see him again. I said, that ain't the same buck. So I immediately grabbed that camera. Now, I got the camera arm all the way on the back side of the tree. I do one of these numbers, swing the camera arm around, grab the bow off the limb behind me, and spin around, and this buck is coming. I mean, when I say he's coming, we'll pick it up where the action starts, and uh, I'll let the video tell the story from here on. Meep. All right, so as you saw, <laughs> when I say he was coming in fast, I didn't get a whole lot of them. I was actually really lucky to even get the camera on him at all. Got the shot pretty good, couldn't do anything with the zoom, but I just got lucky and left it on wide open. And uh, I mean, he was right there in my lap at 12 yards, if that, probably 10 yards. And uh, you kind of saw how it panned out. Now, he immediately took off to and I can't remember if I hit the camera with my bow or what happened, but everything just happened so quick. I literally was swinging the camera, stopped it on the swing where I thought he was going to be, drew, shot. So now let's pick it up to where I've, I hit him and I'm reviewing this camera because, you know, that's a good thing about video and you can look at it in the stand and I'm looking, I'm like, man, it looked like a good shot. I'm like, I don't know, but I could see him. He's still getting it going across that field. I say field, but it's really a grown-up field. It's been grown up for a while. And I said, now I'm sitting in the stand going, man, I don't know, I don't know. So I wait a half hour, get down out of the tree, find the arrow, the arrow zipped on through him. He carried it. A lot of times what will happen is that it will go all the way through these bucks. And a lot of people say, oh, well, the arrow didn't go all the way through. Well, what will happen, you got to remember, an eastern buck, he's not nearly as tall as people think. So when you're shooting out of a tree stand, that arrow blows through him. That arrow will literally, you know, you're shooting, I'm shooting a 31-inch arrow. That arrow will hit in the ground and the fletching is hanging out of his belly. So that's what happens a lot of the time. The ground actually stops that arrow. I find that a lot uh, lately with the ones I've been shooting out of the tree stand. I'll find dirt on the end of that broadhead where that arrow just blows right through him, hits the top of the dirt, and then he'll drag it a little ways with just the fletching hanging out of him. And uh, so I found the arrow about, I don't know, five, maybe ten yards away. Had pretty good blood on him, but had a little bit of stomach matter too. Remember, like I was telling you before in these other videos, when you're shooting down out of a tree stand, everybody says, oh, I even had a guy right in one time. He said, oh, you gut shot that deer. Buddy, if I gut shot that deer, I gut shot every single deer I've ever shot out of a tree stand. Because when you blow through them in the middle, it's going to come out their guts. And there's nothing wrong with that. I've gotten every single one of them that's been hit like that. Now, it does make the tracking job more difficult. I will admit that. And sure, I would have loved to, you know, had that arrow go right through both lungs and come out and blood be all over the place. But this is the real world. This is a real hunting show. This ain't make-believe. And this is how it actually goes down in the woods. And uh, so let's pick it up. I decide I don't find them out there. I don't find them that evening. I don't find them 100 yards away where you're hoping to find them when you drill one. So <clears throat> I get down. I regroup I get my thoughts together you know I've done this a lot a lot of times but it's hard on every single one of them especially a nice buck like that and as they say when in doubt back out now I knew it was gonna rain that night but still you've got to back out on a shot like that if you don't find them in a hundred and hundred fifty yards and not even finding that much blood especially in a grown-up field like that all you're gonna do is kick him up if he's not hit good and then you'll probably push him somewhere where you'll never find him so just back out keep your head about you and we're going to pick it up now the next day. I get down there. I'll start doing my circles because that's all you can do. We don't have blood after rain. And uh, I'll get back to you here in a minute. Well, folks, it's raining on me, so I can't get a whole lot of footage. But uh, <clears throat> I'm not going to do the whole 
walk up, fake walk up that a lot of people do. You know, I've been looking all morning for this deer and I found them. And uh, that's what you call the swamp donkey right there, buddy. Look at the belly on that sucker. Definitely a magnum eight. My camera's getting soaked. So uh, let me cut this short and see if I can get some protection on my camera here real quick. I just wanted to get how I found them here. Let me get some swamp weeds out of the way. I mean, you're talking about an absolute hammer there, bud. All right, folks, doing the best I can in this pouring down rain. Here he is. Took me all morning to find him, and it's absolutely pouring. Of course, it wiped out all the blood, but uh, I'm happy to find him. There he is, big old swamp donkey. Um, hadn't seen this deer in about uh, two years. Didn't see him last year. Seen him the year before, and uh, always been the same style rack. He just got a little bit bigger, like they usually do. And uh, this sucker's every bit of five years old. He might be pushing six. Uh, I'll get some better pictures of his uh, body here, but. Uh, as you can tell, this is a 